Hello and welcome to my Let's Win a Civilization 6 game in Rise and Fall on DT. In this game, I explain the main thoughts that you should take into account to win a DT victory game. So, it starts already at the setup where you make your first decisions. First of all, put the game on DT. Do not forget that. I had it happened, had an amazing start, and was like, wait, why does the AI have only one settler? Oh fuck, I forgot to set it to DT. Do that. Then, the second thing, game speed. Um, generally, if it's slower, it's a bit easier if you, pro if you go for military. On quick or online, it's harder. I'd recommend just keep with standard if you haven't won on DT yet and are still like figuring out how you do that. Um, map size small is totally fine and um, map type I do not recommend continents because what can happen on continents is that an AI has its own continent and if it's an AI like Korea or Germany that's a runaway AI. And if that is isolated, they get so far ahead of the game that you may not be able to catch them anymore. So, you want the runaway sifts next to you so you can take them out. Of course, sometimes there is a warmonger on such an isolated place and you have the runaway sifts next to you. Can happen, but it's a risk I'd recommend to avoid by just pick Pangea. This means all AIs are on the same landmass and the landmass is not as snaky formed as Fractal. So, Pangea. Then, pick your civilization. And pick a strong one. Pick one that has good base economy boosts and useful unique units. Nubia is decent, although the Nubian pyramid needs a lot of planning, so I wouldn't recommend it to people who still figure out how to actually win. <clears throat> Alexander has great unique units, but nothing for the economy. You really need to conquer a lot and very successful, so I do not recommend it. Then that is bullshit. Chandra Gupta is an is okay. Cleopatra is not good, Cyrus is okay. Germany is actually really good for beginners, I would say. But generally, to win on DT. He has no unique unit. But he has an additional military policy slot, which is useful. And he has um, the Hansa, which is super good and boosts your economy a lot. And Gandhi is just uh, the little... The, the Yeah, just Chandra Gupta in verse. Genghis Khan is again like um, Alexander, really good in conquering, but not nothing boosts his economy. Gilgamesh, I can recommend if you the war cards, build a few early war cards can help you a lot. Um, Gorgo can be really good because you get call, uh, if you get war declared by the AI early, that makes usually very hard. To, to get out of the situation ahead because it slows you down since you have to deal with a war you you didn't want to you want to build settlers at the beginning but Gorgo is still like a safe play then Harald is utter garbage Ojo is also really bad meaning gets a few districts cheaper but not the districts that matter you want you want production districts and science districts to be cheaper did we guys okay? Shichaya Varman can actually work because the Domri is an amazing unit for warfare. John Curtin can work, Lautaro is shit. Monty is actually also pretty decent, but also a little bit harder to pull off because you have to do warfare early and do it right. Mvemba is actually also really good. Pedro is not so great. Yeah, it's okay. Pericles is just a weak Gorgo. Russia is okay. But there, is, there are better ones for early on. Um, Philip is really bad. Poundmaker is really bad. China, I'd also recommend for someone who has more experience on DT already. 
because with China you can make strategies work that usually don't work with others. But we're not going for the oddball, we're going for the default. Then Robert the Bruce is of course a good Sif, but early on, nah, he has nothing. Saladin can work well, just because you get the free religion. So you do not really have to deal with that and they still get the benefits out of a religion That's, that can be useful. Korea is of course super strong, you get the science going. Shaka good for military but still nothing to boost his economy. Tamar is just bad. America mm, plus five combat strength in the home continent is actually pretty decent if you have if you spawn not on the border of a continent. Then Tomuris, I mean, otherwise he's good for a tourism victim. He's not that well for DT, but he's actually not as bad as I always thought. Then Tomiris, same with the other war monks, amazing for war, not much to improve her economy. Then we have Rome, simply the best. Go for Rome. If you have never won on DT so far and your attempts always failed, go for Rome. Victoria is bad and Wilhelmina is also bad. We will go for Rome. <clears throat> and give it a go here. You could also s change the start setup a little bit closer, but I'd say keep it at this. Because of course, for example, the start the start location, legendary start, is something people think I forgot to put off the mods. Whoops. Okay, but first, what legendary? Why is legendary start maybe not the best idea? I mean, you get a legendary start. That's true. You get more resources around you, better resources. You just get better land initially to go. But so does the AI. Everybody gets a better start, and that's why I wouldn't re necessarily recommend that. Of course, even with legendary starts, some legendary starts are really bad and some legendary starts are really amazing. But, which is leads me to another thing, restarting. There is no shame in restarting, especially if you want to win on DT and haven't done so before. And feel free to just restart a bad start, especially since they actually have a restart button now. When this game came out, there was no restart button. You always had to go back to the main menu, do the setup again and everything. <clears throat> Loading please wait. Should be soon finished. So, we can talk about why we pick Rome <clears throat> for DT. First of all, the Legion is a swordsman that doesn't cost iron and he is stronger than the swordsman. Swordsman is the strongest early game melee unit. And to have a melee game unit, melee unit early, early on melee units are pretty decent. Later on, they lose value. But early on, the Legion is super strong and it doesn't cost iron so if you're unlucky with the land and do not cover up some iron or the only source of iron you found is in enemy lands well you're home you get legions anyway second thing all your cities you settle get a road to your capital this means all the units or even settlers you build in your capital have an easier time to get to your other cities and your cities start with an additional city center building. What does this mean? This means a monument. This means you start with additional culture at early game. The bath is the least good thing but also good. Now we have a few mods enabled. I will restart and disable them but let's still talk about this start real quickly. Um, this is a shit start <clears throat> because you have no proper tile to settle on you have no river, you have fresh water with the lake, which is nice, but you have no river. Although there is over here a river. You have forests to chop and as I see I have a few hills, which is good. But I have only one good tile in immediate range to work. Over here is a really good tile, but it's from a mod. 
we have some coastal resources which are not DT level good. You can move over here. No, this is <coughs> this is not the worst start. Don't get me wrong. It has some resources around it and it's totally playable. But if you really want to have an advantage, then it's not a good start. I will explain what a good start is after I've turned off the mods. Because the mod changes the the mods I usually use changes the yields on some tiles. And it adds a few extra resources. Um, isn't it cheating when playing with a mod? Yes and no, it depends on the mod. Because most mods, what they do, I mean they improve something. But they improve it not only for you, but also for the AI. This means if a mod makes you stronger, the AI usually gets stronger too. And usually the mods that makes things a lot stronger make early on the AI stronger first. So I will quickly disable all my mods. The gold resource. I will keep the, the, the interface. Stop steamrolling. City states. I like this one. It gives city states more early game units, which means they don't get stomped so fast. They still get stomped quite fast, but it's not like on turn 10, first city state gone. Oh, Venice was enabled. There are a lot of cool mods, as you can see. Um, then the UI mod. I recommend a lot Hellblazer's City Overview interface and Hellblazer's World in Info interface and if you like, also Hellblazer's notifications. The Hellblazer's UI stuff is really good. I, I really like that. Go get it in the workshop, download and try it out. If you don't like it, you can always disable it again. So, <clears throat> let's go back to Rome. Change to DT. Pangea. The rest we leave. What also can make the game easier is just um, add a few more city-states. I mean, it's still on DT. And the game can be fun with a bit more city states. Let's let's just do that. Let's add two more. <clears throat> then the the resources. I leave it as it is because it usually helps the AI more than it helps you because the AI starts with more settlers. World age um, determines how many hills and mountains your your the map has, which means if it's old and it has, um, see, less hills and mountains, it's more flat, don't do that. If it's new, it has more hills and mountains. That could be an option because as a human, you're better able to know what places are good for cities, although it makes it really hard to scout. So we keep it now at standard because most people will keep it just as standard. Temperature and rainfall I would keep as it is to keep the map balanced. You don't want a shit ton of desert or a shit ton of jungle. Good, so we start the game again and talk again about Rome. Why is the monument that Rome gets so strong? Um, because you get a free monument means more culture. This means you get your first civics earlier. This means the civics have good cards in there. For example, at early empire, you get the plus 50% settler production. Rome gets to that earlier. That's really useful because early on, you like these cards to help you out. Also, the borders start to expand faster with these monuments. And this is not only for your capital, but for every city you settle. So it is. it keeps up with your game. It's really damn good. And there's also governors in the in early empire and um, in the one right above it. And an early governor can help a lot. I will talk about governors too in this, since it's rise to fall beat the T game. So you you wanted stuff early. Now you could argue, well, I can just build a bon monument. No, 
That is why another reason why this ability is so good with Rome. Building a monument takes between 8 and 12 turns usually. And that time you could put into a builder and or settlers. Of course at population 1 you cannot build settlers yet, but you need other things way more urgent than the monument. I mean, the monument's be benefit is really great, but the production cost is a bit high. And Rome just gets it for free, so wow! It would be like, what would be similarly strong would be a builder from the very start. Or let no, or not from the very start. Let's say, as soon as you research mining, you get a free builder. And in every other city too. That would be maybe similar strong. No, actually that would be better. Okay, we have a new start in here. This start is okay. This start is really okay. We have good resources around to work. Um, but where do we settle? <laughs> now, first of all, move your warrior to see as much land as you can. Therefore, Let's, I recommend play with yield icons on because yield icons tell you what the tiles are. I know that, for example, in here, I know this is a hill and this is not. Like this, I have trouble to see a difference. But with this, I know, ah, this has one more production, so it's a hill. These are two food and one production. Ah, those are flat. Those are hills uh, without forest, I mean. I see this is a hill, this is a hill. These two are also hills. Oh, this is not a hill, it has only one production. Also are these two bananas, not a hill and this one. But this is a hill and this is a hill. Otherwise, if you're not sure, for example, wait, does gems also add one production? It's flat gems and hill gems should have three production? Oh, I'm not sure. Hover over it. And it will tell you plains, hills, rainforest, diamonds, requires mining. It will give you a lot of very useful information. So, what you want is settle on a plains, hill and if possible a luxury resource and also add a river. That is the best way to place your settler. First though we move our warrior in a way that we can see a lot. Um, if I move him here, I don't see I don't see anything because these forests block the vision and this is not a hill. If I would move here, I could see these two tiles at least. Because the vision is two tiles far and these are flat, this is a hill, so I see over them. But I will not see anything over here. If I move over here, I will see these three tiles and probably these two tiles, if this is not a hill <coughs> with a forest on it. Up here I won't see more because the settler has the bigger vision range. So we move here. Okay, this is a hill forest, so we only we didn't see that much more. But we know we have some good stuff to chop. In rise and fall especially, you want to have forests to chop and jungles can also be good to chop. Forests are better though. <laughs> <laughs> so, here for a head start, I move here. Why? It tells me it is a plains hill. It has bananas on it. I'm not sure if the bananas get removed. Let's see. We can always aim for a better start. I think bananas get removed because they're bonus resources. Strategic resources and luxury resources do not get removed. They, on the contrary, they get improved. Yeah, okay. So it is put down to a two food, two production type. Still, this is a really decent start. Because we get a plains hill to settle on. And we have immediate good tiles to work. And go for a scout. It's up to you if you want rather want five turns growth, six turns scout or 7 turns growth, 5 turns scout. I will go for this. 
is got food. Okay, more jungle, more bananas. We have a luxury here, which is a really good one. It could use more forests nearby. It's an okay start. You know what? Let's let's save this. If the game lets me. Good. DT should. Good. And we restart, let's say, three more times to talk a little bit more about the starting location. Because where you place your initial city is incredibly important. That, that, that can help you so, give you such a big early boost. With this start, we had to move one turn which is usually not necessarily that good, but it's fine because we got out of it three production and five food for our city to work. Bananas are three food, one production. The base tile was two food, two production. If I had settled like on a flat tile normally and worked a normal flat forest, that would be only four food and two production. So clearly very inferior to five food and three production. You want to maximize your base tiles to produce your scout, your builder and your settler. If you go for an early builder or not, depends on your land. But in general I recommend get a scout first. Why? Scout is weak, yes, but scout is fast. A scout will find the land for you and um, find city-states for you, find ruins for you and tell you the fastest way where you can expand to and you want to know it. And the scout is tough enough to survive a barbarian hit or something. Also it may show you where barbarian camps are so you can move your warrior there if they're too close. Now as I said let's move our warrior. Um, the way this river looks, this river starts here and ends here. This means this is the high, the chance is very high that this is coast and this is coast. Coast is generally not good, and of course, on coasts are no goody huts. Therefore, we move. We could also move on the hill because it would show us all these tiles. Or we move to the north. I decide to move to the north. Okay, what do we have here? We have stone on a hill. We have tea on a hill. We have some elephants on flat land over here, and we have amber. Oh yeah, amber was added with the rise and fall, not with the mod. We have a lot of forests. Um, we are on a plains hill, and on a river. So yes, we will settle in place. Definitely, there's no reason to move. The good thing with this start is it's even better with the base tiles. 4 production, 5 food. Oh my god, is that good. The downside is, I mean also good is we have good stuff to chop. The downside is the luxuries, 2 of the 3 luxuries are in the third ring. So is the stone. And the good tiles to work, I mean this is okay to work. And this is okay to work. But the rest of the good tiles are all in the third ring. The horse is good, the stone is good, and the amber is good. The elephant is mediocre. You want usually two production and two food, or three production and one food, or three food and one production. You want four. This has four, this has four, this has four, this has four. Yeah, we have a lack of that. So, this start is not better than the other one, but it's still how the basic things fit. But feel free to restart in hopes for the perfect start. Of course, there are other factors that help you very early on, which we come to once we play a few rounds. Yes, to 
to win on D team, it's so important to have early production, have early food, get your settlers out early, because the earlier you get your other city, the earlier that other city starts to grow and to produce. If you play right, you will not just build settlers with your capital, but also with your first expansion and maybe even your second. And why settling on why settling on um, luxury resource so good? Because luxuries usually give you gold or sometimes science or culture or faith. And if you settle on that, first of all, you hook up the luxury so you get the amenities out of it immediately, which is nice. But also, you, <coughs> you work that tile with your city immediately. This means the gold, culture, faith, science, you get that just for free. And you can work something else that gives food and production. That's really good. While this is a horrible start. Everything we want to chop is in the third ring. It's far away. We have mediocre resources around the horse. It's really good. We are on the Plains Hill, yes. But, I mean, what the fuck? Why is everything so flat? <clears throat> I like me some hills or mountains. Now, this is really a terrible start. Especially the first ring. No four yield tile. No. And in the second ring, only one four yield tile, and the rest is garbage. This is. This is so bad. Let's have the settler lines up to see where fresh water is. So, yeah, all the fresh water tiles are bad besides the one we're standing on, but that is surrounded by bad. Don't take a start like this. This is bad. Really, really, really bad. And now the Michael Jackson song is in my head. And at the same time, the Weird Al Yankovic song. <clears throat> why, uh, why is Flatland bad? You can place farms on it, you may ask. No, 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 no. Farms are also bad. I mean, yeah, food and housing is good to grow your city, but what you need, why you want to grow your city is to work more production. And if your star just doesn't have any production, what does it help to grow your city if it doesn't get to work more production? Maybe if you're Gilgamesh, Sumeria, you can place um, on the grassland tiles some cigarettes, which at least will be science. So you, a bigger city can work more science. That can be useful. But even if you have that, even if you have that, you need production, at least in some cities. <laughs> and usually it's best if you capitalize the production, because it needs to pump out settlers early on and builders. Early on, your capital is everything for the first 15 turns. Now we have again such a jungle start, similar to the other. I could settle on the gems, it would cost me two turns. Therefore, let's move here. Because none of the surrounding tiles is a hill except for the one I'm standing on. It's a lot of forest. Okay, let's do that and move to here. <coughs> Ooh, we're lucky! Although it's not the best. Mm, the problem. Why is this natural wonder a disappointment for me? I mean, it's a natural wonder that should, that's supposed to be good, but it is sure. But the problem is, um, this wheat is kind of good because um, it is only a three tile, but I can make it a four yield tile, and it gives me some culture and money. That's okay. The problem is. Let's check this fresh water, maybe we can settle next with, oh no, this is coast and no fresh water. <clears throat> the problem is, these two tiles would be the good tiles, but they have no resource on this. If it had like stone here, 
or or a good luxury some rice on a marsh or something then it will have at least more food and more production because as good as two culture and two gold is you don't want to work this early because it doesn't let your city grow which you need early on and it doesn't give you production which you need early on so this is not very good and it baits you into a holy site I'm not a fan of this star. I mean, we have all the good things that we asked for early on. We even have good bananas here. We will settle on this plains hill. Okay, we get the error score, which is nice. But we want to work this anyway. So we have now again 240 yield tiles to work and more money to start with, which is nice. We can scout a bit more. We have some rivers to expand, but to be honest, I still like our very first settlement more than this. I'd say it is stronger. Let's give it one last try, and if that is, again, so very similar, we get a lot of jungle starts here, then uh, we go to the first one. I hope this one is either really good or really bad, so I can explain that once again a little bit more with examples I mean it was a decent start some jungles to chop, some forests to chop but um, it could have had a few more of the really good base tiles right around it and the wonder did not really help except for the boost to astrology which is something you don't research early and um, you could talk about astrology and holy sites do not go for a religion on D team. It's a bait. It takes you production. First of all, to get a religion, you need to rush rush it on D team because the AI will have it so fast. But to rush it, you need to put all your early production into holy sites and profit points. That's that's production that costs you settlers. With that production that it takes to get out a religion, you could build two or even three settlers. And the religion is not worth that. It's just not. Wow. This is an interesting start. but it lacks food. <laughs> I did never expected to say that. I, I don't like the start. Why? You have a good tile here, a good tile out here, okay tile here and here. I mean there are four, but with one food it takes forever to grow. You are on plains hills, that's good. But it, I'd say it's still bad. I mean, you can move around and hope for a natural wonder and restart if you don't find it. But why this is bad? If we work this immediately, we have five, we have five production, which means the scout is out in five turns, which is good. But fourteen turns to grow is unacceptable. We will need this tile as soon as possible. Um, the city will get it soon, but it means either we're not growing fast or we take longer for the scout. I'd go for this in this case for the lower tile, for the lower yield, just so our city at least starts to grow. But in two turns we got this because we roam only as Romeos this fast. This means in two turns I can switch over. So it's actually it's doable with this start, but you lack still the good tiles close to you and the forests you want to chop. It's good that you have some. But it could be more. So, like I said, we go to this start and talk about the first few steps you make to win on DT.
Yeah, it actually records the voice a little bit for Sean Bean. I put an off sound recording of the game. <laughs> mm. Things that make you start stronger. I mean, a natural wonder can be really good in your capital if you get that, if you're lucky, or at least for an expansion if it's a good one. There are good natural wonders and useless natural wonders. For example, the new one that gives science and faith, that is very big, that, that green mount, flat mountain, that green mountain with the flat top that drops water around, it is really pretty. That one is really good. Or the one we had before can be really good if it's surrounded by resources. So let's go with this. What otherwise can help you a lot is um, finding city-states early. So you get the... Oh, there is coast. I did not expect coast there because the rivers go in this direction and this direction and rivers end in coast. So let's scout more. Always scout in a way that you cover up the most vision and preferably move your full movement. This is also coast. This is a lake. That's good to know. Always check that. Because if we if this would be coast then I know oh this may this could be a peninsula. And so we do not scout that efficient. But now that I know this is a lake, this means this isn't too big. This will end and on the other side will be land again. And also we can settle on it if you want. Whoops. It's fresh water. Also, um, wait, wait, what is it? Is it four? Yeah. Um, this is four, number four on your keyboard. Does this. Do that occasionally when scouting because it can tell you um, three tiles out I can settle. Let's say it is suddenly somewhere red and it's not a mountain then you know there is either a city-state or another player nearby. So far we don't see that. Hmm. Let's go to the north. Okay. We really need our scout. You can always do some min-maxing in your city. For example, scout is two turns, growth is one turn. Growth stays the same, scout two, but A, three more production. That's uh, three more science. That's good. Ooh, we found the Netherlands. Can turn on the sound. It's an honor to meet you. We would love to sample your hospitality, of course. Amsterdam. I will open her diplo menu because it's DT and I see a settler. I want to know if she has settled more than one city. No. This means her settlers are still around. And she has it here. There is a lake. Netherlands like lakes because they can. Holy shit, this lake is really good for Netherlands. They can fill it with polders. I will move one closer. First of all, to have a bit more vision. And because the settler is unprotected. If it stays unprotected, you can steal it. But since rise and fall, loyalty is a thing. Therefore, stealing settler is not always that good anymore. Because you need to bring the settler home. Since if I go here, if I put up four again, we see I would not be able to settle it here. I cannot forward settle her this hard because I would lose the city again to loyalty pressure. But if I could like steal it and bring it back here without dying, then it's worth it. But only if, if I lose it again and lose my warrior, then I've wasted my chances. Or I could go for... She has barbarians down here and... Okay, this is... 
as safe as it can go. <laughs> She's great. We took it first of all because we see this warrior cannot smack us. This warrior can, but it's just one warrior, which is four stronger than ours because she's DT AI. They get just four plus four to all their units. But hey, I should be able to safely bring him back here because I also know she has no warriors around here because when I came from here, I haven't seen anything. Maybe in the meantime, she managed to get a scout here. We will see. And our scout is out very soon. Um, this is good. We can work like this. We will also get the sheep. We can decide next turn if we want to work more growth or we stay in production. Okay, she moved him away from the barb camp. Which is bad. Because now our movement matters a lot. Let's do that afterwards. Because I cannot move here anymore since she made a smart move. But I can move on rough terrain, and she will not be able to follow. Of course I take the settler with me. Okay, then the cards. Always slot in this one. Always. Always. It's... This is... The money is nice, but the faith... It takes 25 faith to get a pantheon. And... Even then, the pa all the many pa of the good pantheons may be already gone, and the pantheon, if you don't get a religion, I mean, yeah, you're not going for religion anyway, so, eh? To get a pantheon is still nice, but you will not pick the best ones. You have to take what's left over anyway, so why rush it? Get it later, when you get faith another way. Because the 25 production is really good. Especially since in 25 turns, you will have more than one city, so it is more than 25 production. Because this is for all cities, and this is just for your capital. This is so much better, especially since production is worth so much more than gold or faith. This is superior to this, ulteriorly superior to this. I would even consider this if it would be two faith and two gold for the capital. Then I would consider, then I would think about it. But as long as this is not better, no way, this is better, by far. Here, it's up to argumentation. We haven't found barbarians. We have a scout out that could get some experience, maybe, to scout faster. But the terrain is not super rough. And if we get now that we are at war with the Netherlands into barbarians, we don't want to lose units to them. Let's go for combat strength. It's, it's the safer play. question here is in which direction do we scout? Fine, let's go south. There is a barb scout. Let's hinder that guy to find our city. Because now we want to start on a settler. It's eight turns for the settler. This way we grow. This way is really good. We surely want to work the gems. Um, we grow in seven turns and then get a settler after that. What does this mean? We, when you finish a settler, you lose one population. You can only build settlers when you have at least two population. If I do it like this, I will build a settler and then lose a population before I grow to pop three, so I will back to pop one, which means I can for a few turns not build a settler. But I want to follow this settler with another settler. At least that's highly likely. Therefore I go for this, so I grow like one or two turns before I finish the settler. And both tiles are more or less equally valuable. Since I'm not building a builder, I'm going for this. Why am I not building a builder? Um, even though I'm going for mining. The only thing I could improve is this, and there's nothing in range to chop. I would need to buy it. And the city will go for the, for the sheep and the bananas first. So, a builder cannot improve much, and therefore not give me the boost for craftsmanship yet. That's why I'm also going for foreign trade. Always make sure that you don't finish them as long as you haven't have the boost. Just go until you have um, researched the other part and then change. 
if you expect to get the boost at some point. Sometimes you just did not get the boost. It happens. If she's smart, she attack me and the other one move in. Wait, what? Oh yeah, I was standing here. She moved closer with both. I could now move here. Now I have a window of opportunities. If I move here, this warrior will smack me. But I can run away to this tile afterwards. If I'm unlucky, then there is another unit around from the south. The question is where do we want to settle? I want to settle probably on this lake. We have fresh water. I would love to settle on a resource or something, but I don't have this option. And I want to settle soon. I could, of course, move from resource... Oh no, if I move here, let's say I move on this tile. Then this warrior moves on this tile and this warrior moves here. And where do I go afterwards? Yes, I can go here, but then this warrior that stands here will probably smack me. And still stand in the way and zone me. I don't want that. I want to get to a settling location with a life. That's the plan. Therefore, we go here. Ooh, a ruin over there. So, she has no units down here. Otherwise, this ruin wouldn't be there anymore. This warrior will smack me but not kill me. And afterwards, it can move here. And this warrior cannot follow me. I mean, it can follow me, but it cannot attack me the next turn. Therefore, I know I'm safe because I will not survive two attacks. That's why I have to be very careful. A warrior only survives three attacks of unimproved DT level warriors. So, our scout can scout a bit more. We found a city state. We are first with it. See, we get now from the city state to faith. Another reason why it was never worth to set this in. We get free faith now. Since this one blocks us, zones us anyway, I will attack him once to get some experience. I can heal him up on it anyway, and I like this guy to be damaged, but I have to pay attention here. Okay, she moved one on the hill, the other one sla smacked me. And if I move now down here... Ooh, there's a luxury I could settle on that. I could also settle here, but then she can already slam my city. Wait, why is this tile not... Okay, this tile will be settleable too. The lake ends here. I consider another city in here. Hmm, I would like to settle on the resource. Why is that good? To settle on luxuries. Another reason, not only for the good tile yields, it's also good to sell the luxury to an AI, to get early money to buy maybe a settler or a builder. Which boosts you start again. Well, we have to decide. Mm. Right, I cannot settle. I will be able to settle here. Okay, we have to move further anyway. Fresh water and wait, is that coast? That is coast. Because it's not as dark as these places, it has the color of these tiles. This means there's there's coast next to it. Okay, I rather scout a bit more. Can move on this hill and then scout to the east. I don't know where the barbarian come from came from. We want to uncover the land. The good land. Who deserves more credit? So the barb scouting our land. A goody hut. Finally. I will not survive another smack. So if I'm threatened, then I have to settle. Question is, I could settle. What I could do is of course settle like here and get an aqueduct. We roam after all, aqueducts are better for us. And get another city down here. I really like the city down here. I will move the warrior first. Because if there would be another unit somewhere, that unit would possibly die, and then I would have to settle the city before I lose 
I mean, let's say there's an orange warrior here. Then I know, okay, this guy is going to die and I cannot move here and settle in the same turn. This would mean I have to try to run away with this to my city or settle because once it's settled, it survives a few hits. The unlucky part is we haven't found another safe yet to sell stuff to. But since this location is safe, I will move down here. Good. Science-wise, we have mining to chop stuff. We want animal husbandry to improve the sheep. Now, how long are we at war with her already? Because we want to make peace as soon as possible. Six turns remaining. We have to survive for at least six turns. There are chances that she doesn't make peace. Okay, let's settle. And now let's... Let's get the ruin. Sailing boost. Oh, that's bad. We have to move this unit back to Ostia as soon as possible. And I will start on a warrior in here, just in case. This guy, of course, gets the ruin. One new population. Oh, wow, that is really good. Grow in six turns. Let's work it like this. Then we grow to pop four and bring the settler out. So it is five turns now for peace. The scout... No, it gets zoned. She could kill this and then attack me with the scout. She did not decide to slam my city. That's good. But we have to run away now. Into the city and heal. There, the barb camp is there. Oh god, that's really bad. That's super close. There is desert. The river. Let's move here. What a luxury. But we have to see what is surrounding it. The land is mediocre so far surrounding us. Four turns, if I remember correct. We found Khmer. Very good. It's an honor to meet you. We would love to sample your hospitality. We have to make friends with him immediately. Oh good, the barbarians are attacking her. That is good. Now will I survive a slam? Oh, highly unlikely, huh? And let's just heal a turn, because I would like this guy to get a promotion, but he needs to fight at least two times. Another barbarian. Oh, and he's over here. That's bad, he's very close. Let's send him a delegation. Let's try for friendship. Let's see how it is. First impressions are minus five, because I'm probably at war. But we can try to sell him this. And see how much he pays us for it. Early on they tend to pay a lot. Okay. So we have some money to either emergency buy a unit. Another goodie hut. Oh shit, I forgot to change that. That's a mistake I make often. I forget things. Try to pay attention to those things. Oh, good. Laventa is helping me. Please, Laventa, kill the camp. I can get a hit here, but I'd rather heal a little bit longer. Here. No, he will take it. And he has settled up here. Shit. Because it's on a jungle hill, I couldn't move directly to it. Really boxed in, if not much space to expand. We need to expand in here early to, to get that location secured. Okay, she moved on flatland. Now I can safely attack her, also because I have more health. And she should be willing to make peace. Oh, in one turn. Okay. We want another city in here, also to block her out. So the land down here is safe for us to pick. The desert is concerning. Oh, she got a promotion, that's bad. 
That's really if bad. No dogs in heaven. Yeah, and they cannot attack her because of that anymore. I need my scout back. Because this this unit is an issue. But you see, the instant road would allow me to move over here very quickly. Now I cannot because of the barbarian. That's why I will move here. I would like to get early bronze working and maybe archery. But early bronze working is really good. It reveals iron, which is a good resource, even though our legions don't need it. But it allows to chop rainforest, which is super good for us. Of course, we also aim for the boost. Now, I would really like a builder to improve the gems, to sell them, and the, the, the sheep. But another settler would be good too. Let's go for the Builder. We haven't found another continent and our scout is coming back. I don't expect to find another. That's why I'm finishing it. Other reason why I'm finishing it now, I want early Empire early. Also, in five turns... What are you working on? In five turns... Okay, it gives me the gold and still grows in five turns. In five turns, I have the boost for early Empire. Right? Is it five pop? Oh no, it's six population. Then it's in eight turns. Can we speed that up? In six turns, very good. In six turns, we have the early empire boost. That's really good. Check boost always for the important civics and, of course, technologies. Why is early empire so important? This production towards settlers and the governor. These two things are really good. So, going for a build right now is the smart thing. We can chop out settlers afterwards. Barb camp and the ruin. The barbarian over here is really concerning me. Which is the fastest way to this tile? That way. Four to that, four to that, five to that. So this is just as fast as this. I don't know where the Barbarian went. If the Barbarian is on this tile, I could easily walk on this, but if it's on this, then I'm in trouble. So I'm going on the marsh here. I keep building the, the warrior in here. Usually you could also go for a monument, but because we roamed, we already got it. That's why we also already expanded to this tile. That's so good, that's so good. And she fights Barbarian down there. That's good. Oh, wow. Shit. Oh, this is a big danger. We have to move to cross the river. Otherwise, we may lose this. We got early empire with the boost. This is really bad because in four turns we would get it anyway. Let's heal in place for a moment. We could check if she was willing to make peace. We could have checked that first. Because if she makes she makes peace. If she, no, she doesn't give us money. She would go for white peace. She hasn't settled her other city. Oh my god, she hasn't settled her other city. Maybe she has lost either the settler is moving around still, or she has lost it to a barbarian. It happens very few times. Oh, but if it's moving around, it may be moving in here, which would be very bad. Let's wait another turn, because right now we already made the save move. Peace before we moved would have been good, because then we could have moved on here. So, early empire in seven turns. Good. I will still let the city grow. Early Empire will also give us a governor. Ah, because of barbarians. Okay. We want to move here and move the scout on this time. Protect it. Okay, I don't see a settler here. 
I will move one further because I want to see if something comes from this direction. I will move, of course, the warrior back if it is threatened by more warriors. But she seems to not want to fight me. Probably because she has too many barbarians around anyway. Two warriors, though, are a bit scary. To be honest, let's move this guy back. Let's move up here. If I settle here, this spot is still free for a settler, which also has a luxury. Oh, and a bar barb camp up there. Could also settle here, but the loyalty is a bit close. But could still go for this, of course, and snatch the, the gems with money. Well, whatever, we will see. Now again, if this scout slams me, we are happy that we locked in this card. And scouts sometimes slam you, see? This would have been much more damage otherwise. Move here, we move here and get the promotion. Oh, she settled there. Okay, so... As predicted, she settled in my direction. Now she has many units here. I will go here, get the hit. For the 4 experience and then make peace with her. Because now she has settled and I really don't want war with her anymore. She doesn't want peace anymore. What? She took it before. Now we could of course save scum. Would be the smart thing maybe to do. Do we want to push out a settler or not a builder? A trader would also be good for the boost. But we have roads already. Could send him a trader. Or start on a settler already before we have this. This is now a hard decision. Depending on how many barbs we kill. I will go for another builder. And then settlers. Then settler, 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 settler. Oh wow, oh wow, this is really bad. Let's see if she makes peace now. Okay, we should have taken the peace before, we were greedy. We were really greedy, because now we lose the city if we don't buy a unit, but I don't want that money to be wasted. Wow, it doesn't even kill her, but we can check again. Does the AI do that? I think that she does only that do calculate things like... Really? She wouldn't do it for money? Okay. She changed her mind in two turns. Okay. I did not know that... I mean, I do know that the AI sometimes changes her mind. But I didn't know that they do that this early. So, we have to go like two turns back? I think it was two turns. Let's go two turns back. I mean, some consider safe scumming cheating, I consider it not cheating, because the AI cheats so much, it's e you can do things like that. It's, from the, it's the best way to learn from your water, mistakes. Sometimes you're like, oh shit, I've done that wrong, I regret it now. First upright steps and by just reloading from, from the moment where you made that mistake, and do not make the mistake and see if it actually changes. Helps you learn a lot. Because it tells you, oh, okay, that went different. Did it go better? Yes. Okay, then you know in the future how to deal with such a situation. It did not go better. Okay, so your initial mistake was maybe not even a mistake. So you learn a lot out of safe scumming a little bit. And of course, if you forget things, if you do misclicks, then just reload. Especially if you misclick. If you like move a settler and it moves in the wrong direction and you're like, no, there's a barbarian. Then instead of dealing with that, which is horrible, just reload and move the settler in the direction you actually wanted it. So. She will settle her city up there next turn. Now she still makes peace. Why does she change her mind from this turn to the next? Probably because she has my city surrounded and thinks she can take it. 
it's interesting that the AI actually has that thought process. No, that was a, that was for example a mistake, but it's not a big mistake. Should have moved him down to heal and deal with the barb. In here we're working the good tiles. We have soon a builder out. Okay, this is going well. Hmm. Considering we have two very close neighbors and only found one city-state, which is not the best city-state. Move here, get the hill promotion. Move here, we still want to settle on this tile. Move in here. Oh, probably because there was a... because the guy got a heal promotion, she was like, Ah, now I can kill you. You don't need to be able to remove jungle to improve the tiles there, even if it's a mine. We still go for another builder. Now we get a pantheon. We get to move this guy. He should be able to move safely into that tile, so I can kill this guy. To be get rid of that nuisance. Move here. You heal. Then here the pantheons. So we get to that part too. If you get a pantheon actually. Don't rush the pantheon. But if you get one. Try to get something good. Divine spark is always good. Even if you're not going for a religion. Because it also gives you campus and theater districts. More plus one point. That's nice. You want campus districts. And the holy site stuff is garbage. Is the earth thing still here? No, of course not. That is always gone so early. Okay. That's also require... Usually everything that requires you to build a holy site is bad. Wonder product On DT you're not gonna build wonders. Production from fishing boats can be good on a naval map, but not on Pangaea. M production from marsh, oasis and floodplains is usually really good if you have a lot of them. We have a few, but only three in total. That's not that much. But for example, if you like Egypt and start on a desert with floodplains and stuff, this can be really damn good. Food from camps, we don't have that many camps. Culture from pastures, we have one pasture, or we get one. And we probably buy this, these two tiles. Maybe. Got to see. We have more pastures over here, so culture from pastures is an idea. Truly an idea. Stone circles, we do not have much stone for once. That can be really good to get some faith going, because faith is useful, but it's not something you should... It's useful like money, I'd say. A little bit less than money. Then from mines over strategic resources, we don't know where mines were. This means from mines over iron, basically. And we don't know where iron is, so... From mine, two faith from mines over luxury and bonus resources. We have that, we have gems in here. Oh, that's it. Gems up here. That's not good. Then the banana is culture. Culture from bananas is actually not bad. Um, the other one we have is um, cotton, which we have too. So oral tradition would be kind of nice. Or harvesting, because we will harvest a lot and this will deliver us a lot of faith. Actually, I will go for this. Do we, can we manage to get a golden age? Because there is a golden age um, benefit you can choose that lets you faith by builders, traders and settlers. If we get that, then this one is really good because we will chop out a few settlers and if we get faith with that, we can faith buy some settlers. That would be the best Wombok combo there is. The question is, do we get a Golden Age? It's really hard to control getting a Golden Age. What does Laventa want? Train an archer. God, it's not gonna happen that soon. We made peace already. 
I think we were not getting a golden age. Because for a golden age we would need to like settle, find a wonder and settle it and get control over a city-state, get some more boosts and build two districts and all of that in like 18 to 20 well it depends on how long it takes because if the next age starts in 18 turns we're not gonna get it if the next age starts in 38 turns so let's let's say with the safe play if we get a golden age then we will be super sad but if we get a golden age we can always save scum load this very turn it's turn 23 and go f for this, change our opinion. So now we go for oral tradition. Culture from pastures would have been good too. But we go for all oral tradition because this tile, this tile, this tile, this tile, this tile will give us more culture. Also this tile and this tile. And this tile. We have a lot of bananas and two cotton, which is good. And next turn we can sell this. Sorry. Oh wow. So she built another settler. She wants to settle here. His early empire early empire is closed borders. Oh I want that so soon. A warrior, um, nope. Good. Now we see who has more money, who is willing to give me more money for that. She has 64. Would she give me that? For gems, she would give me that. How much money would she give? 5 and 2. How about him? Nine! Oh wow, he would give me a lot of money. And he also has more flat money. This is so good. Why is this so good? Oh, we still need a bit more. It's okay. We will have that at some point. That's about six turns, right? 60 plus 6 times 4, that's 24 more, that's 84, 84, that's 60, plus 80, that's 420. So, 8 turns. In, in 7 to 8 turns we have it. You have healed quite well. Wait, did I move you? Oh yeah, I did move you and saw that. I want you to help out Rome. I think I will send you here so we can use the road. That's faster. Oh, we are up to 19. It didn't take that into account. So in like six turns we have it. I think the barb camp down here got cleared. That's good. It is like this. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm not sorry. Um, we go here for the trader. We heal the scout in place. It's already in our territory, which is good. In here, we can go for a build. No, in here we go for a settler. Because it's pop 2. It lacks a bit of production. That lacks actually a lot of production. But we still can start to build a settler and get, a, get one out later. Although it will be very expensive for this city. It really lacks the production. Usually I would do that in the city I built first to go for a settler. But it has not the good tiles I was talking about. The good tile is growth. We still settled it because we want many cities. Many, many cities are. Oh yeah, I wanted to block this settler from going to settle towards me. Spotkanie.
found Poland. We do this because we want... Oh, this means we, we lose a few turns on our settler buy. We can now get good relations with her. Because I want to send her a delegation. I want to be peaceful with her. I have no idea where she is. Let's change first. Because we want the settler production now. Even though we do not start it because we want to buy first. I really need some money. Oh, there's sugar down there. That's good. If I don't send her a delegation, I can start building it. It's true. What are we going for? Because we don't finish this now. We will need it for iron working, which is important. Can go for writing. We will need that anyway at some point. Archery, of course, too. But it's right now not a priority. We get our government, we take Magnus. Magnus is amazing. Culture wise, this is just two turns. We want to get to political philosophy early. And we were not fast enough to get this boost, and we will not be fast enough to get this boost. Unless we build like a mine, and then. But it's still, we have it in two turns, so eh, whatever. We roam, we're so fast, we're faster getting it than actually chopping stuff. So, delegation is 25 money. This means it costs us like a turn of money. But we will do that. First impressions are minus six. Girl, why? Oh, she likes us. <laughs> For some reason, she likes us. Oh, maybe she likes people with culture. This is bad. So we got our two builders. Actually, I send one over here to improve the cotton. You want irrigation, actually. Farmer resource. Yeah, we will not get that boost. Now you go back. Move up here. You scout a bit more down here. Oh, it's bad land. It has hills though, but it's not the greatest land. We want to start on a settler product, pr settler, and before we finish it, we want to buy one because once we finish the settler, the cost for buying one goes up. Oh, we should have asked for friendship as long as she's green here. Because once she is not green anymore, we're in trouble. Skill without imagination is craftsmanship. So let's ask her right now. Can we sell her something? No. Yeah, the scout cannot end unless it's on the cotton. Ooh, this guy is there. heal. I would like to kill this. Another... Mm. Mm. Let's look at our settler lens again, because we want to settle over here. We have to settle a, a basic tile, which is a bit sad, but it's what we have to do to improve this. Oh really? Where is your damn camp? Once I see a settler again... But what are you going? You're going for the sheep. Very good. And I can buy the other tile later. Because I want the sheep. Although I will never be able to improve it. 
if she gets this tile. So I hope her city expands somewhere else. She already expanded somewhere else. That's good. Because I want, I would like to buy these two tiles, but I'm not because I like to buy the settler first. Sheep is also very good because it's three food, two production. City state died already. Come on, move away so I can move this. Guy. So I can move this guy safely. Dude, you kidding me? Can I kill this one in one go? I think so. So let's move him here and bait. He attacked Jayavarman's scout. Nice. That's really nice of him. This guy has two uses left. Let's improve the bananas since we get irrigation very soon. Yeah, in eight turns. We can buy the settler now. Let's buy it already. Three pop. We work on these three ties. That's good. Wait, will we grow anyway? It will grow anyway. Good. As we can now see, the next settler costs 120 more. That's why we want to buy one before we build one. Because we only build two turns slower. Wow, you got you steal the kill. I hope you die to another barb. Because we really need barbarian kills. Oh ouch, I'm not gonna fight that. Can still help with this guy. It's a nuisance that there are barb. Your delegation is most welcome, my friend. Thank you for the money. I mean, we have had three cities out before turn 30. That's what your aim is to have more, several cities out before that turn. You go up there. Okay, fine. And I scout somewhere. We do not have irrigation yet. We do not have irrigation yet. Then you wait a little bit. Actually wait here. Then you can always in one turn retreat into the city or improve the the goodie. And the same with you. We have the money for this now. I will buy it because the city doesn't expand to it. And I want to be safe with this. So I can improve the sheep someday. I'd like to move over here. I don't like this scout. That's why I'm going to attack it. Also it gave me promotion. And I can move this guy here. So the warrior is flanked. Which I don't have yet. I don't have flanking yet. But still it's good. gardens that's fine I really need water I've finished my coffee okay, that is of course bad but our scout can finish that and We will get it back if he steals it now. Dude, this make your mind. We probably need a few more units over here just in case. But we need also our settlers out. We need some settler in here. Maybe some settler down here if we can do that loyalty wise. Of course one in here. See, he decided to run. Good, finally, finally we can kill this guy. I'm also interested. We got bronze working, very good. Have you finished bronze working? 
Yes, we finished it completely. Because it was a bit close. Iron here on the desert hill, it's bad. Iron here. Oh, this city is so good. Soon. In two turns we can improve our Magnus. Also, free monument means more loyalty in your cities, because a monument improves loyalty. Makes forward settling easier. Now, I will do a smart thing in here. I will put a turn into a warrior. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I want to delay the settler by one turn, because I want the governor title to give Magnus view promotion, this promotion. The upper part is nice, but I want it because settlers trained in the city do not consume population. And because I'm just one turn off of both, I will make sure that it aligns well. Kill the barbineer. I really want to see these three tiles. So. Yeah, I think I want to settle here. I mean, I could settle closer. But what benefit does that have? And in here This is a little bit up to you. A warrior would be nice, a builder would be nice, a granary would be nice. Let's get the builder. The builder or the warrior is my decision here. I usually say that or ignore. Their request. A strong economy begins with a strong, well educated workforce. Okay, cool. Of course, we want to go to political philosophy, super important, and our governor title. In this case, I want this. Sometimes it can also be good to go for Liang because she gives train builders that are trained in the city she is, plus one charge, that can be nice. Sometimes you need some loyalty, maybe her can be good, but I, I like him. And sometimes when you expect an aggressive neighbor aggressing on you, then he can be good. So now I would like to have vision on this camp. And clear it. Spearman, oh, the camp is down there. Now that we have it, I want to finish the settler. Open borders. I will do that with him. Because I'd like to have friendly relations with him, and I do not expect him to forward settle me too much. He should have enough lands, because he's central. Now, what I wanted to see is settler lands. In here would be an option to settle. Let's go for that, as long as we can, loyalty-wise. Let's deal with this spearman. These two can soon improve the stuff. That's very good. We work the good tiles. Very good. We grow in four and get more stuff. This is on a forest, so I need anyway a few turns to get there. But it's improved, guys, so he should make short process with that. 
And it's totally okay to settle close to your capital from time to time. Thousands have lived without. Let's kill him. Get some experience. The, the area around the city state should usually be safe. Let's go on the hill so we have vision around it. And we get now our culture going and more gold. This city has these two tiles, they're really good. This city is now decent and starting to roll. And this city is amazing anyway. Let's let it grow a bit. It needs a granary afterwards, really urgent. Because it has a lack of food, of housing. Therefore we should probably not put in the growth. Yeah, let's go for the production actually. Let's just put it on production focus so it switches over to the iron once it has it. Which is in 13 turns. A bit slow, but hey, it's still a free tile. Research wise, we will want to improve that in 13 turns. This means we want to research on this already a bit. You have one more use. So do you. So you go and improve the iron because it takes longer and you improve this to get more culture to get the iron earlier. Good. Next turn. And we have still the settler production card locked in so we really want to produce settlers. This guy, to feel safe, will heal a turn or two. Here we move here. In here we can get this kill finally. It's sad that he spawned one, that's annoying. I thought he's done with spawning because there were no scouts around. And we always have to keep a little bit of attention to potential settlers. Yeah, this is an issue now. That's fortified hope he suicides on me. Good. City has now more money and some culture. Really good. Uh, eight turns. Good, we speeded it up. You heal one more turn. And here, oh, I have to go this way anyway because, because the city expanded. I want to move here and see the land in here. So this is still settleable and not pressured by loyalty. Which is good, this means we can go for it. Then we can build place another city somewhere here. And another city up here of course, that gets the way it is. So we will need sailing at some point. Oh my god, what I just realized, Netherlands have a harbor that does steel tiles. She builds the harbor like here or here, we're in trouble. <laughs> oh, and we will probably enter a dark age. It's okay. I don't mind the dark age. Dark age is actually not that bad. In nine turns. It has a few very good cards. Now that is a bit too much. Um, which city do we want to improve? Um, of course, our capital because we are building settlers there and we don't lose population in there oh a natural wonder like to the, the dead sea cool and some stone so settling in here is good In here we have a potential for a great, great Zimbabwe. I'd rather be on rough terrain in my own land. And in here, all my cities are pretty much the same. I could send a trade route to her, because she likes to have trade routes. That's her bias. And it would be cool to be friendly with her. Because I really don't want a war with her right now. I'm not having legions yet. Therefore I send a city to her. This one goes through this city. 
and this one goes through this city. Let's get this one, then we have a road in here in case we go for war later. It's four money and no food and production, but still money is also good. Let's move this guy first. There is cotton. I want the cotton to be in range, actually. We have to be careful, loyalty wise. Let's move here and see these towns. Okay, the world ends down here. See, points wise, we're close to the Netherlands. A joint war. I'm sorry, I don't want joint wars right now. I'm really sorry. Did we sell the cotton? <laughs> if we didn't, then we did a mistake. She should like me more because trade routes. Yeah, trade routes. Actually, this equals out. She should be like me more now than she dislikes me. But the denunciation is still really active. How much would you give me for this? Nothing, because she probably has it on her own. And let's see what the Jadwiga gives me. For Jadwiga. A lot of money. She's giving me all her money. Let's see, would you give me more? You already have cotton, so obviously no. Then let's sell her our cotton for all her money. Sadly, it's not more than that. Okay, we've got a builder in here, very nice. And we go for... Granary would be nice, a builder would be nice. Let's get a warrior, just in case. Um, and settle on these tiles. There would be a good harbor in here. Let's settle like here, then I get a good harbor, but not the tiles around it. Still like to get this. I think this is fine. Let's move here. Move back. Oh, you are still healing. There is only a scout in there, let's kill it. In here we need to fortify. Sadly we did not get this boost, but you often do not get this boost on DT. Because city-states are killed so quickly. But we're doing good. We have very soon five cities out, the next city coming. How much? 680, that's a bit expensive. And we need to sell another luxury to be able to do that. Or to sell iron, but still that takes me five turns. Yeah, I will not be able to do that. I mean, I could hold this at one production and wait to get the 680, because I can clearly get that. It delays this city, but it speeds up another city. You heal in here a bit more. You. Thank you. More luxuries down there. More fish. We want to settle closer. What would you do? Settle closer? Settle. Because there are no plains hills. So it doesn't matter if I settle on flatland or on hills. I'd like to not settle on a forest, but I don't want to settle over here. And with this one, I have two good tiles right in range. Sure, let's settle in place. Let's not go for the harbor plane. Ooh, error score! We managed to get an normal age instead of a dark age. That is good or bad? Uh, we'll find out. <laughs> In here we clearly want a builder. The city is so far away, you will not have the time to get a builder down there. We're doing really good money-wise. We have 31 money per turn. Actually, I think it is a smart move to delay this builder. That is sudden. Ooh, I may lose the warrior down here if it doesn't happen. 
Or we can get more error score because we add up in four turns. In here, I will move here, get the combat against ranged, and try to run away. Can actually not pass in here, so I have to cross the river again. There are roads down here, nice. Yeah, you fortify, you cannot be killed by them. Can you? No, I don't think so. Um, now which government are we going for? I like all of them. If you go to plan, I think we go for oligarchy because we will kill someone with legions before we go for another government. That's what we do. Otherwise, Classical Republic has two production cards, which is really good. Um, Autocracy has the best boost here. Plus one to all yields for each government building and palace in a city. This means plus one to all yields in your capital and once you build the government, you get even more. This makes you really good capital. But we go for this. It doesn't give us much right now, but it will be very helpful at war. Before we lock in the cards, we have to see. 16. Because we want to buy that one. Therefore, we don't need the production for it anymore. Could finish the warrior. Go for builders. Let's finish the warrior. And now lock in cards. We don't need this one anymore. If fighting against barbarians, we sadly still really need plus one production in all cities is really good then in here we get this one the loyalty per turn can be good if you have loyalty issues somewhere because you settled a little bit too far get a unit in there and get this also when at war this can be really good but right now I'd rather have money maybe two money would be good cheaper tile purchase nah Builders, because we build a few builders. Let's go for builders. For builders and production. Because we build a, a builder in here and in here. In that case, we go for a builder in here too. Let's get some builders out. You need the granary. You're going for a warrior. You know what? When builders are already cheaper, go for a builder. You can get the cheaper warriors later. I don't want to finish this yet. I really don't want to finish this before I haven't built like eight, eight warriors. Because I don't want to build, I don't want to produce legions, I want to upgrade warriors into legions. That's way more efficient. Because this one has 110 production costs and upkeep, while a warrior has like... A warrior has 40 build cost that's not even half and an upkeep cost of zero I mean yes I need to accumulate the money to upgrade them all to legions but that's not a problem it's not that expensive we could get writing because we need some science going we could get the wheel or sailing for some resources but we have no luxury resources right now for sailing so we we will need masonry though for the battering ram. We want the battering ram. And of course harvesting stone on flat land is really good. I always consider harvesting stone on hills because it's it's better than a mine early on. Later on you harvest it. So we could pre-research masonry bit. We also will need some archers. But then again we could do the slingers things. Although they're not that expensive to build. 60 is not that expensive. And there are 45 money to upgrade. Let's go for this, because we need this anyway. Let, let's go for writing first and then for the other. Like that. Colosseum is an amazing wonder. I would like to get it. Let's get military tradition first, though, because the flanking is good. And I want to have the... Oh, it's the cavalry. Now let's get it first. 
Colosseum you want to plan that it covers as many cities as possible, another reason to settle your cities close to each other. Good. Our dude survived. 22 damage he took from this. He has 32 life. He should survive it. And here I really want to run. Now it can only shoot once and then I'm then I run away. Get this. Which is okay-ish. Then get up here. You go for that in two turns. Very good. Six hundred eighty it was. Oh, something changed in here. Did he like us for a moment? Oh wow. Oh that is bad. That is that is very bad. Our warrior died in here. Um now these messages are so useless. They appear and then they move up. I cannot read them. And still they block the vision. So I have no idea what killed my warrior because it wasn't this warrior. I think there was an archer that appeared and shot him. go for this. We will never get that boost in time. Let's bring our scout up again. Would love to scout this land more. I think the rest of the AIs are behind Jayavarman. Oh, thank you, Netherlands. Uh, wow. That was killed fast. Two archers. Oh, that, that's a problem. That's actually a problem. Get the iron in here. Very good. Ravenna is a good city now. Wait, the pasture also gives housing. That's really good. The archers are an issue. The archers are a big issue. But Jayavarman fights them. Ooh, that's that's very good. Norway also there with a scout. We're unlucky that the barbarians started to spawn another huge wave when we were actually there with a warrior and that we actually lost it. But we're lucky that these guys have units in here. Make a dedication. Doesn't matter much. It really doesn't. Writing. can finish this very easy. But I don't want to yet. Let's go for this. Let's heal this guy a turn. Okay. We have soon enough for the settler. Once we've built the settler, I think a city here, a city here. And then we're done with it. Because in here would love to scout with this guy. I want him in the city to maybe slam at the unit. Yeah, they run away. That's bad. Bad for us. Like this, I can slam. Or heal. Here I can slam too. To heal a turn and then move closer. Get this going. Very good. Next turn we have enough for the settler. Very good. Norway likes us. We should make friend make friends with him. Yeah, sure. Let's buy buy us open borders. Oh we can sell luxury. Oh no, we can sell iron. Of course, let's sell iron. Good, this guy is close. I want to slam him. Move here. First, let's get a friendship going. Yes, good. And let's see. He doesn't have iron. Does he value iron? Yes. 
7 gold per turn. How much for this? 4 gold. Oh wow, she's she's bankrupt. How much for this? Twelve. How much for the iron? Eight. Okay, we sell you this. Wow! That is a good friend. And let's sell him the iron also for 8 gold per turn. That's totally worth it. So, he will not attack us because he will lose iron if he does. I mean, he may do still, but it will be very unlikely now. Holy site and high population cities. Nah, the holy sites we cannot do. But now we have so much money. We can buy several things. We can also buy a granary in here. Or save up the money. Oh, three turns now. Okay, fine. You heal again. You are fully healed. Come closer. This is super good now. Selling stuff, get the stuff early and sell it. Is like in C4, uh, like in C5. That's that's how you get going on high difficulty. People this guy is on a hill. This means he can shoot here. This means if I if my attack would kill this guy, I will not go for it because I would be in shoot range and probably die after the attack. That's why I wait. You improve this and the settler goes south. I would like to settle here, but right now I cannot because of barb issues. Although there was also an archer down here, so I may have to... ...to do stuff. Um. I want to chop out the Colosseum somewhere, so we have to do that. Okay, let's take a two minute break because I need something to drink and I need to pee. And then I explain how I build a wonder when I really want it. Because I say, wonders on deity, don't go for it, it's a bait, they're usually not worth it. There are very few exceptions and the Colosseum is one of it. Um, global Diplomacy, Stonehenge, none of them built ones. Is the Temple of Artemis still available? Can we build a camp somewhere? Because Temple of Artemis is, ama is also amazing. But you need a camp to be able to build it. And this map just doesn't have camps. Okay, cool. So, I'm right back. Okay, I'm back with water and an empty bladder. So, do we want to change something in here? I don't think so. Because we still have barbarian issues and even though I would like to spam out some units, 
I think we save that for later. Right now we need to fight the barbs. We need to combat strength against barbs. And we're still building builders. But as soon as we finished all these builders, we will flip to one warrior in every city. This means we will do that soon. Which one? We can we save this one because we not plan to build the oracle. Even though it's a decent wonder, um, it gets usually built early by the AI. If you rush it, you can do it, but it's not worth rushing it because it takes so much product. 290 production this time. I build three settlers, so no. But we save it so we can change the cards in here for free. You can always change them once you've unlocked a new civic. Otherwise, it costs you to change them. So, we save this for when we want to change it. And we will go for this because it gives us a governor title, which is really good. And be the target of a declaration of war is something I cannot influence. And something I am actually happy if it doesn't happen. So we have to go through this without a boost anyway, most likely. And we, we failed on this, we failed to switch this. Yeah, let's actually start on archery. I forgot again. Because I'm getting a builder here that can get easily a quarry. Oh good, they suicided. Oh wow, it wasn't enough. Go with the scout. The scout will probably die to a shot of this guy. If the scout doesn't have more health. Settling here is actually what I want. Then this builder has done the stuff we need. And we work more tiles. But I would like to chop in here. Because I want this. So we have to plan this. It will cost us money. We have to buy. We have a city in here. Or we'll have. Okay. So you need... The way the Colosseum works, wait, it's here. The Colosseum, what does it tell? It gives... Um, two culture, loyalty per turn, and two culture, two loyalty, and two amenities to each city within six tiles. This means within six tiles of the Colosseum. How is that count? Does the count? Does the tile the Colosseum stands on count? Does the tile the city stands on count? What it means is you need five tiles between the Colosseum and the city or less. If you have more, this benefit will not work. So, the city, the Colosseum itself, must be next to an entertainment complex that has an arena. Since rise and fall, the arena is a requirement. Before that wasn't. This makes it harder to get. The AI also likes to build it, but the AI usually doesn't rush it. And it needs to be on flat land. So let's make the tile counts to flat land tiles. We will find the place for the amenity complex. And we want to chop it out with magnets. That's why it's going in our capital, especially since our capital is surrounded. So, um, I will add a pin for where this city is going to be. You can always build another city up here if you want to, but I don't think so. I think we're fine with um, seven cities. Maybe another city down here, but I cannot see. We'll be out of range anyway. So, there, this city will be here. Let's put a pin for easier tile counting for the Colosseum. Oh yeah, I mean two culture, two loyalty and two amenities for all cities is really good. Why for all cities? It's just within six tiles. Yeah, we count it now. Let's see. From this city. This is the furthest western city. So, one, two, three, four, five. This. This is the reach. I can I have to place it adjacent to this or closer west. 
this is the furthest eastern and southern city. So, one, two, three, four, five. Shoot. One, two, three, four, five. Or one, two, three, four, five. So, this is the range. So, here we, let's settle, place it here. This is the range for the city that is furthest away from this. Ravenna. Three, two, wait, three, two has actually the same range, just a little bit further up here than this city. And Arpantium will be three, two, will be like here. That will that is possible. It is possible to get these two cities and Antium, and of course the city down here, but this city will miss out. If we place the Colosseum like here, this city will not miss out, but both of these cities will miss out. This means we want our city bordering this tile or within this tile. So we can remove this since we will not get this city in in our Colosseum range anyway. This city is 3, 2. So it cannot be further south than this. Then this city will be close. So I'm Currently I'm thinking on one of these two tiles I will place the Colosseum. No, on this tile, because this is not this is not working. This tile is probably very likely. Or maybe this tile. Does this city reach to this tile? 3, 2, here. Yes, it does. This is like 3, 2, here. Okay. We have two options for our Colosseum that covers six cities. Six city Colosseum is amazing. So we definitely have to buy a tile. And we probably want to buy more, some forests. Where will we build the entertainment district is the question because that has to be next to it. Therefore, it's time to plan our districts because we want an industry district and a science district. A science district would be nice to have in between the two bananas because it's jungle. A jungle we don't shop. Or next to the, between the gems and... So here or like here would be nice. And we want a flat land next to it to build um, Oxford. Then we also want the industry district, which has to be surrounded by mines. This is certainly a mine, but to have more than just one mine, we need to place it here, then we get three. Can we get more than that for the industry district? We can get an amazing industry district in here with rural valley option. But the rural valley cannot be placed on the flat land if I settle here. If I settle further north and build an aqueduct, what is the option of that? I will get closer I will get closer to some tiles. It's actually decent. I just have to build an aqueduct. It will have a little bit of lack of housing early on, but it's fine because it will allow me an amazing Ruhr Valley. Ruhr Valley, why is that such a good wonder? First of all, the AI doesn't rush it, which means we can get it. Second of all, it's a later wonder, which means chances are higher that we get it. So, it gives plus 20% production in the city, which is already super good, helps you to build later on spaceship parts and plus one production for each mine and quarry. It must be built at a to an industrial zone with a factory, easy peasy, but also a long river. Okay. Plus one per mine and quarry is super good. That's why you want your city full of hills and that's why I may consider to not chop, to not remove the stone, maybe. I can always build the rule on the stone because the industry district here will get three mines and a quarry me. In here it will also get three mines. And could build the Ruhr in here. 
but then it takes also a mine. Because if I build it in here, I will get mine, 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 quarry, mine, mine, mine. Amazing. Downside though. Okay, let's let's lock this down. We plan now. We plan now our city. This is important because you can maximize the shit maximize the shit out of it. And here we want the rule. Let's write rule. Because why are we doing this now? It's going so late. Because if we build something else there, then we may screw over our possibilities to do this. So Oh my god, we could get great Zimbabwe in our capital. But I think Antium is our candidate for that. Because it has one, two, three cattle in range. And possibly more later. Great Zimbabwe is cool. Although if we build it in the capital. Okay, let's think about Great Zimbabwe later because we have other cities that could build that. It's a really good one too. Um, the greatest wonders, maybe, real quickly. Besides Colosseum, really good is the pyramids, if you can get it. Then Petra, if you have some amazing desert spot with a lot of pet, lot of desert hills. Then the Forbidden Palace, because five culture and one wild card policy slot is super good. Then the Great Zimbabwe. Because plus five gold and two merchant points is good, and also one more trade route, and also all your trade routes from this city get plus two gold for every um, bonus resource within three tiles. It is hard to build because it has lots of requirements, but two gold for every bonus resource within three tiles of the, that wonder, it's actually really damn good. Then Oxford, because it gives plus 20% science, that's really good percentage science is rare in Civ 6 and the Ruhr Valley which we talked already about. The later wonders are okay if um, the later ones are in the culture tree. The wonders like up here are okay if you go for a tourism victory. Otherwise nobody cares about most wonders in here. I also like the mausoleum but it's a bit hard to get because it needs Stuff I could get it in Ravenna, maybe. That's true. No, she builds a harbor in here. We will lose all these tiles. We will kill her anyway. That's okay. It's okay. We'll kill her. She really did the perfect harbor. Damn bitch. Okay. So we have. Oh, the Temple of Artemis is also really good because it gives food, housing and shit tons of amenities. Great Zimbabwe, why is so good over here? We can build it, it needs to be added into commercial up and and the cattle. And cattles are bonus resources, which means, and bananas is too. So, if we maximize it well, we get one, two, three, four, may, five. If you build it like here, and this is not in there. If we build it, we cannot build it here because it needs to be added to cattle, so we can only build it here or here. Here it gets the sheep, here it gets this cattle. Still, it means four. This means two per bonus resource. We have four bonus, re we have five bonus resources. We have four in here already. Five bonus resources. This is plus ten gold per trade route from this city. Holy shit, that's so much money. Okay, so we have cleared this. Where do we want the science district and the Oxford? Because science could go here and Oxford here. We wouldn't remove any mines. The science would get good stuff. We could also build science here and get Oxford like here. Then we have this tile free for a wonder because these two tiles will chop. So on one of these two tiles will be the Forbidden Palace. Probably on this because I want mines over here. Therefore I will not build the science in here I think. 
So let's go here. This is the, the palace. It's actually said the Forbidden City, but it, it was named Forbidden Palace in before, so I'm used to that. Therefore, like science district in here. Then I could build a commercial hub in here. Or do I want the commercial hub somewhere else? Because I'd like to have some adjacency benefits. The government district is also to go somewhere. Um, if I build the Colosseum like here. We may build the Forbidden Palace in another city, just because other cities may have the better jobs. Oh, this is so hard! So, let's say... If you build a science district in here, and Oxford here, and Colosseum here, we have a great, commer a great culture district in here. And we could even build like a marsh wonder, like the another one. That you, the question is, is the other one the worth building? Which wonders do we want besides the Great Zimbabwe, the Ruhr, the Oxford, and the Colosseum? Is there another wonder we could consider into this? Religious wonders are out of the question. Big Ben is really good, but it's a bit hard to get. The Kaza can be good. Right, we never really take a look at the continent. We are all on the same continent, so the Kaza is not that great. Sadly. So it has a low priority. Otherwise, if you have cities on different continents, this one is amazing. If you don't have, it's just okay because you get the three governors. The Putala Palace is kinda good. Hmm. I don't think that we will get Big, get Big Ben, Oxford, and Ruhr, and Colosseum. We will not get all of that in one city. We won't. So if we want Big Ben, we have to probably build it somewhere else. We can always build it in this city or something. Okay. So we could truly build Oxford here, Culture District here, and Science District here, Oxford here, because Oxford comes late and they may want to chop this stuff before. Yes, I think that's our plan. So this will be the, the Colosseum. We're Rome. We have to build the Colosseum, right? And this will be Ox bah. Oxford. That's how you do misclick when you think you're writing, but you're actually ordering by shortcuts. Then we can build a, uh, a culture district here, always a commercial district here, and the entertainment district goes here. The culture district can be built by this city for here. And this city can build its culture district maybe somewhere here or so. And this city can always build Big Ben and Great Zimbabwe, depending on what you get. Maybe I miss out on one of them. But also buy this to chop. Would be kinda good. Okay, so yes. Entertainment has to go there. We are finishing a settler in here and want to start soon on the entertainment district. If we finish this, we can do the walls overflow thing. <gasps> I can explain that in this video too. It's a long video, I know, but we learn. I think you can learn a lot out of this. We didn't go for cheaper tiles. This means it costs us a lot. Mysticism is two turns.
We want the point is we want to change twice. Because what we want, we want to keep this in. And we want I would like this to buy the tiles cheaper. And then once I start on the Colosseum, because I have the entertainment district with arena finished, I want to change to this. This is more important than this, because this just saves me money, which would be great. But this is 8 turns, because I want this too. How much money do I have to spend, because I need this tile for the entertainment district, this tile for the Colosseum, and if possible some this forest. Or these forests. But I certainly need these two tiles. What are you going for? For the marsh. So I need 160 money. Then I have still more than one. Then I have wait, 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 160 plus 120, which is the forest. 120. And we also need to build a builder or move a builder over here. So 120 plus 160. That's that's 280. If I add one more for us, 280 plus 120, that's 300, 400. Exactly 400 money it will cost us to buy lots of tiles. And we want to do it earlier as long as it's cheaper. Let's do it. I mean, we would save a lot of money if we would get the other thing, but I think we are then too slow on this. In camp, the entertainment district needs nine turns, though. What I want to chop it out... I want to start to chop it out as soon as I have this card. And if I go for this, I will, I will delay the production of it, so no. As soon as I have this, I will switch stuff around. Therefore, we have to buy it now. buy this and we could buy this to see a little bit here do you have movement left? no how long for a builder? 8 turns no, warrior so we will not be able to lock in the warrior production because we want a faster colosseum that's okay we have a builder in here with two chops. That we will save up. And we will get this builder too. To do some chops in here. Okay, we have the right governor for that too. Let's move here. Therefore, one more forest we can buy. Can probably probably buy even one more. So Let's buy this, because the city is not going to expand to this. I mean, the city is also not going to expand to this, but this city may expand to this at some point. It will certainly expand to the sugar first. Okay, so we bought the stuff. I want the entertainment district locked in, in here. Good. Good, we did stuff. We get him a lot of warrior in here. Because we also simultaneously plan out our war against our neighbors. Probably the Netherlands because they steal some land in here. And they should be an easy target to pick off. You have some promotion. You are the one with um, with good stuff. I want to switch you too. So you can get your promotion. This one. And you can kill this one. You could kill this, but would you survive another attack? Highly unlikely. Okay, the archer is nowhere to be found. You wait in here until it's safe. Do we risk the art? The, 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 because if there is another archer, then this guy is dead. Risk it or not, we could always save scum. I should survive. Unless this guy moves and shoots him. 
build has two uses. So move him here. Good. Whew, we have planned so much right now. Very good. People send me money. That's good. We still want to save up money. And we want to build slingers so we shouldn't finish archery. Wow, he actually did that. Question is, will I survive if I attack him? So he really did that move. I'm impressed. And not amused. Start on the builder too, as long as we have the builder. We actually have faster builders for a while. For five more turns. Do we want another builder in here? As long as we get the builders. Sure, let's get another round of builders actually. Ah, there was another archer. Okay, so this guy was dead anyway. Can't fight two archers. And another city state died. At least Laventa will not die. We could take Laventa. We could kill Laventa, true. It's a good city. It's on a river. Wow. I shot an arrow into the Just wow. This guy should survive because he has to cover promotion. I'm still waiting with this settler that's too risky for my taste. City needs improvement. The granary afterwards. Actually go for production focus because you are anyway housing starved. How long for another builder? 12 turns. Ah, it's a bit long. Fuck, we finished the archery. I forgot to change it. Sometimes I'm really stupid. So we have to build the archers, actually. Oh well. After the Colosseum, we will spam out units. Why not now? Because after the Colosseum... I will finish defensive tactics and then finish the Colosseum in like two turns. It is not that life is These archers are so obnoxious. I have to retreat. For a moment my units are not healthy enough anymore. So and after that I will finish the, Ox the Colosseum in very few turns, in one or two turns, and then I will ch take this to change the cards again and change the cards to unit production. That's my plan. Please shoot this guy. Let's get the quarry in here because it's good. We can remove it always later. And get another builder. Let's get this one because we need this one at some point. We have an envoy but we don't care about, about that city state. We have nothing to... Wait, we have... We have diamonds to sell. Norway, I heard you're rich. Four gold and eleven. That's not so much. This guy is usually rich. He has gems already. Maybe she doesn't hate us anymore. Because here, it's actually really damn good. She has gems too, of course. She settled them. Yadviga, do you have money again? 
Or are you still bankrupt? Wow, she's still completely bankrupt. So you're the only guy that gives me money for it. It will not be much. Yeah, it will not be much. But it will be still some money. Okay, this is good. Good. In here, we have one that can shoot me. But he can shoot me when wherever I stand. So that's 45 for the defense bonus. Two turns. What I mean with the wall overflow, I will explain as soon as I can actually present it. Good. Now you're again. Good. Stay in production. That's good. In here we get when the quarry boost. So we can get the battering ram too. You go for the battering ram because the battering ram doesn't count as a unit. So in 14 turns we're ready to kill people. She doesn't even have walls yet though. What are we researching? Currency. Yeah, that's fine. Currency is a good tip. Did Viga and Jayavarman are at war? Oof. I'm sorry. But I don't have much coastal and I will get culture bombed by someone else who is coastal. We really need to kill her. Could we make friends with Jaya? I would rather be friends with him, to be honest, than with her. Because he dislikes her, she's at war with him. But I need some friendships. Because if she survives the war, she may get some income at some point again. Good, good. This gives housing, that's good. These are really good tiles. Hmm. Good, I can kill both, I think. If there is none behind it, then we're we're set. That's good. Of course we have to heal both of them. And since, since we have no scout anymore... Yeah, that just happened. You move here for vision and stuff. Wait, no, the camp is still there. Okay, 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 okay. Next turn we change. So next turn all these builders will not be that fast anymore. Can sell that over and over again. You have quite the military, huh? I don't. <laughs> I'm nearly at zero military, but he should like me. He shouldn't hate me. Actually, nobody is actually hating on me, that's good. But they will once I start to kill people. But once I start to kill people, we have military. Okay, now we show what I want to show. We remove this. And we need this. We have also to remove this. Because I need this one. Of course I could move this out, but that one production for all cities is really good. Okay. Now, we switch in here to ancient walls. Ancient walls cost 80 production. Chopping this forest gives 100 production. But because I get plus 100 production towards defensive buildings, this gives me 200 production. This costs 80 production, so 200 minus 80 is 120. Therefore, I get 20 more production out of this by chopping the walls. Later on, it will be much more. But it's already worth it. And I get free walls, which is kind of cool. How much is the Colosseum actually? Colosseum is 400 production. Therefore, if I really want the Colosseum, I have to chop one more forest. We got this. 
get the arena in one turn and then the Colosseum. Temple of Artemis. Yeah, Temple of Artemis would be great, but there are no camps. Or do you see camps somewhere? Maybe down here. Maybe someone of my neighbors builds it. Would be nice. You heal and you heal. I hope there is no scout for me. Um, the next governor we want. I think the builder governor is what we want. In Ravenna, because Ravenna gets the builder first. A point to Ravenna. The builder will be out first, so we finish the warrior now. Choose civic. We wait on this a little bit. And start on feudalism. Very good. It's a good tile to work, to be honest. And, um... Can we sell you cotton? You have cotton. Can we sell you cotton? Super good. We could get a golden age, maybe. Because we will get legions very soon. Let's buy this as long as it's just 80. Because I want to build something there. I can chop this too. How is your housing? Not good. So we will go granary science district, something like that. And we also will need the governor district. That's true. So where does the governor district go? <sighs> Possibly somewhere in here. To get not on a hill, on a flat land, and somewhere where I can build a commercial district right next to it. Maybe it goes here. And you can build a commercial district like here. We will see. Go here. You have just one shop, you have two more. Got the arena out, now the Colosseum here. 19 turns it says, that's not fast enough. Um, I'm in no rush to use your other use. I can scout a bit in here. There are, there would have been whales. So it would have been an option to settle further for that luxury. These three have a golden age. Money. If it does... Okay, good. So for the 45 is a bit high, but I think we can do it. Oh, we did not shop that. Mm, I'm stupid. Yeah, I did not shop that. That was very stupid of me. Yep, now she stole that land. Sad face. Let's go on this hill to see a bit more. Why are all these units over here when he's attacking Yadwiga? I'm not sure what his plan is. Because I get the feeling he's not planning to attack me. He would have done sooner. Another warrior there. I delayed this unnecessarily long by making mistakes.
if we miss out on it, we load because we. I moved this guy too early. I didn't want to. I wanted to chop and then move, and I just moved because I thought I. I didn't think. I thought, oh yeah, next chop this, but I haven't chopped this already. That's why I checked I how many build slots he still has to use. Yeah. Well, we should get it. We should get it. Last city, which starts directly on a granary. Right, this leads to the aqueduct, so let's get it. I've seen the land in here. Oh, you can see it more. Fine, let's scout with the builder a little bit. Builders have decent vision. The funny thing is, you keep your pantheon until the end of the game. How long for my trade route to come back? 10 turns. So we could time it for that. So I'm not sure if we lose the trade route or it just goes back. I think it just goes back. I may be able to save the forest for later and just drop this. Should be enough. Corvat. Okay, but now you come back. I've scouted enough. The Oracle. That is a late Oracle. Open borders. No, I will not give you open borders. He just wants to settle. I can check how many cities she has. Sometimes the wheel turn. No, she has found other places to settle down. The resources to improve. The whales. So we have it next turn. Let's change in here. Oh, we have it in two turns. Fine, one more turn feudalism. Oh, I miss. I didn't see the. Really? 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 It starts to spawn immediately again. I don't have all the warriors yet, but I haven't changed the cards yet too, so here, archers, we will need some archers. And feudalism also leads to mercenaries, which we could get. Just need some farms, build an encampment, I will not build an encampment, the encampments are garbage. And start to build some mines for my capital and repair the sheep. This guy has one more because of Liang. Very nice. But I think I must make this a two part video. Can we kill this? If we can, I will do it. Good. Because I'm really tired of these guys. These damn barbarians everywhere. So next turn we have the Colosseum. It's really good. I will need a granary after dust. And of course the campus district in here. <clears throat> because we neglected our science culture wise we should be doing really good
29 culture. That's better than most data is. And even science-wise, we're not that far behind. Wow. We're doing really good. While the Colosseum stands. We still have stuff to chop for later game wonders, that's good. Finish the Colosseum, so we want to change in here. Should have done that last time, but it's okay, it's okay. You need the granary. You you still also need the granary actually, because you're a housing cat. The Netherlands declared war on me. A surprise war even. With archers. To say I practice military. Okay, let's um let's get an archer in here right away. Let's ignore that guy and bring our warriors back. Because she's a f she's like five turns too early. So in here we don't need this. We don't need this. We want. City defense strength, actually we want this. That's helpful right now. And we want this one. To speed up the production of these units. Good. We have three warriors, four, only four. I need more warriors. Five. Fine. I'll build a farm in here because I will need some farms. Oh wow, we got thrown out. I can build a farm there with the last use. And we need some more farms with these guys. Send an envoy. Don't care. We also need to improve the sugar, which we haven't done yet. Mistake of me. It doesn't matter much. Let's send it to Antium, that's the safest route. Okay, what I think, since now is another part, this was the early game, actually pretty much, besides of the barb camp, the ideal early game, nah, it could have been better, better would have been no barbs spawning on me, and let's say more city states over here, maybe a cultural, a scientist and a production city state, that would have been really good, but still, it's not bad what we got. So. This is how you do your early game. We haven't even reached turn 70 and we have 7 cities out that are up and running, producing things. We have a military coming up and we will soon slaughter Netherlands. They only have 196 strength. That's not much. As soon as we upgrade our guys to legions, we will be a powerhouse and slaughter everyone. So as long as this guy doesn't join, which he probably doesn't do as long as he's at war with Jadwiga. We are fine. And we have the money to buy something in case of emergency. I could actually already move this guy over to this city to maybe chop out walls if necessary. I mean, it takes a few turns. But we will have Legion probably before that. No, no, no. It's fine, it's fine. We're doing good. Although, would I want to chop out somewhere else? 
let's think about that real quickly. Is there a wonder that I need to chop out soonish? No, we're nowhere close to a wonder. Okay, it's fine. So, see you next time with part two where we actually go to war in our let's play, let's, let's practice to play on DT. See you next time.